Hello, lovely people out there. Welcome to another wonderful talk for the B3 Biennial, the Biennial of the Moving Image in Frankfurt. My name is Johannes Grenzfurt. Now, I'm actually an Austrian, usually from Vienna. Right now, I am, am in Frankfurt uh, in some shitty hotel room, but that does not matter. Just a little bit of background about myself. I'm an artist and, and filmmaker. I've been doing uh, crazy art projects and films for the last 30 years. Uh, I buried people alive. I created fake Soviet states. I uh, created a festival for cocktail robotics where people make machines that make cocktails and other crazy things. Uh, but I'm super excited today to be able to talk to Ilya. Uh, just a brief introduction, Ilya Popov, Russian entrepreneur, producer, collector, which is also very interesting for me, uh, but uh, an expert uh, in the field of marketing and licensing of uh, children's goods and services. And he is one of the uh, uh, chairman and founders of uh, uh, the Ricky group uh, of uh, uh, companies. Uh, and I mean, I, I, I could go on and go on and go on. I would just like right now start into the uh, into the conversation and use the little bit of Russian that I know. Stotakoi <laughs> Riki. <laughs> what, what, what is Riki? Tell us a little bit about about yeah, what yeah, it is. Yeah, your, what Russian, it your, your Russian is very, very, very good. <laughs> uh, yes, Riki is a group of company. Uh, I found this company 20 years ago from a very small team, just like a 15. Uh, uh, guys who start create uh, the first uh, games and uh, but everybody from our team like, was crazy about animation and dream about to make some new animation from Russia because actually uh, uh, from Soviet Union period uh, we uh, have a, a lot of great animations uh, for, uh, produced in our country but it was a government studio and, uh, uh, and actually, when we start, it was in 2003, uh, actually more than 20 years before this period uh, was nothing uh, created, uh, if, if you talk about something big, and uh, if you talk about serious for kids, actually in, in US, uh, US, uh, USSR, it was nothing created before because uh, in Soviet Union, uh, animation studios was created only some small films and uh, uh, some feature films, but never create uh, a real big series like in Japan and US. Uh, in our country, it was n n n n n nobody uh, produced something like that. And we decided 20 years ago that we want to produce the first uh, series in Russia with uh, more than 200 episodes. And we establish a company and we start <laughs> create our project in this moment. Mm -hmm. And it was a really uh, like a, some big adventure because nobody in our team understand how we can, how we must to do it. Nobody in our country understand uh, uh, no understand about licensing uh, how to take money from from, from that uh, project but finally uh, we start and uh, after a few years our first project is named uh, Russia Smishariki it's coming like a really big uh, success uh, project uh, now it's still uh, this moment is still one of the the most successful and the most well-known uh, brand uh, in Russia. And uh, it's how we start our group of companies. Start this project, uh, we start, we establish uh, animation studio. And after that, we establish uh, licensing agency who starts to license our rights. Uh, we establish publishing company who start creating books and uh, magazines with these characters. Uh, we establish event uh, agency who starts to uh, create events and the ticketing show and many, many others. And finally, at this moment now, we have around 18 companies in our group with two big animation studio, one in St. Petersburg in my 
uh, homeland and uh, another in Moscow. Uh, and uh, uh, also around 15 different projects, including Smisharik is uh, our first project, uh, but not, not only that. And uh, now I can talk that we are not just a company for Russia, we create our projects and uh, sell and promote this around the world. And we have uh, many partnerships with many animation studios and media companies around the world. Yes, and now it's at around uh, 500 uh, creative uh, people who work in our team. It's not 15, it's now <laughs> much more bigger company. Uh, and we keep, keep going and uh, uh, continue to create. But now we also we create not just on the series, we create also feature films. Everything around animation and uh, brand, build brands around animations. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I'm glad you mentioned the, the old Soviet days of, of animation because I'm a huge fan of that kind of stuff. So like, uh, I'm probably the only person I know that is uh, <laughs> like a fan of that, that kind of stuff. But what's in interesting for me is that animation used to be extremely expensive because there is, I mean, it was, if you made an animation film, like only people like in the early days of like, uh, of a caliber of like Walt Disney or so could pull that off because it was so labor intensive and so expensive to make animation. In the meantime, of course, that changed because we have computer uh, possibilities that, that weren't there. But in general, what is the big difference of the good old days of animation and creating animation nowadays? Uh, yes, you're absolutely right that it's many things uh, was changed from all times and uh, now when, when, when we start producing animation we start from this from the start we um, uh, use uh, computers and it's uh, like a uh, computer generated animation and it's mean that uh, we never use some like a paper and uh, mm -hmm. classic cameras or something like that and uh, that help us to produce more quicker more cheaper in the production, but at the same time, it looks uh, very good because anyway, we invite for this process and we teach for the, about this process uh, animators who start uh, uh, in a cl classic way. They uh, drawing uh, the only the animation before, and we invite to our company and we give them new tools for for create animation. And it takes time, of course, uh, for understand that to for some so someone that uh, was quite like, hard. But finally, uh, now we produce all animation with uh, with computers, uh, and we do two D animation, like a drawing animation, uh, CGI, like a three D animation. Uh, um, and all different techniques. But anyway, we use uh, computer for that. Uh, and there's a big difference between <laughs> Soviet Union period and right now. Uh, and of course, we use uh, the same software uh, any other companies uh, worldwide use right now. We have some standards, Renderman, Maya, and uh, yeah. uh, the same tools what use uh, big animation studios around the world. But at the same time, we invest a lot to uh, our own R&D department and create many features uh, for our animation, which we develop especially for, for us. And it also helps to produce more and uh, faster and with uh, good quality and with uh, like reasonable, uh, reasonable investments. And uh, as if you're talking about production costs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, you already mentioned that you create many, many products and many, many animated films and series and stuff like that. Uh, so the stuff that I know uh, is very much like um, uh, you see the influence of like uh, of uh, of Asian cinema. You see the influence of, of, of Japanese manga and that kind of stuff. Is there stuff that you do that also draws from from uh, like the Russian history of animation and that kind of stuff or or not not that much? Because I'm kind of interested in like how the cultures kind of <laughs> merge or, or come together. I don't know. 
Yeah, that's a very, very good question. Uh, of course, our animation and uh, all our team who create this animation, because we uh, uh, we all from Soviet Union and we all from uh, Russia, and uh, like uh, some part of our soul, some part of our culture, it's included in our project. Any project. But at the same time, uh, we never try to produce something like, especially for Russia, especially for some, like a, it's like, it's like mix actually. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not trying to produce some like, you know, any anime, because I understand that best anime can produce only in japan or asian countries and nobody was trying to repeat that uh, in the country they never produce the same yes and at the, the, the same time we never try to produce something similar like a disney yes because they also have their own uh, like a style mm -hmm. and what we start from from that start point, yes, we start to research and uh, trying to find our own style. And of course, because Russia, it's some uh, this country is between Europe and Asia, our style is something like a mix. That's why we're very successful, for example, in China. Yes, because in mm -hmm. China, they uh, they like our characters, they understand these characters, uh, how they look. But at the same time, the story uh, with our characters and the story what we uh, create, it's uh, it's more Western story. Um, and now, for our all new projects, we we invite international team. Now it's not like it's only like a. Russian guys who are trying to produce and sell it uh, around the world. No, we invite uh, creative guys, partners, uh, and uh, going more deeper and deeper in international production. And uh, mm -hmm. you know, with culture don't have uh, borders. Yes, and uh, animation yeah. the same. Uh, yes, and we everything flows we go this way. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah, yeah. yes, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So, how, but first, how many, start from idea. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, first absolutely. Start from idea, yes. Yeah. yeah. So, and and how many of of your projects uh, are being developed uh, by you or your teams, or or how many are like people actually coming to you and saying like, we have this script, we have this idea, what would you do animation wise wise with it? Is there like uh, like so? How many times do you actually create your own? stories and how many times do you create uh, help other people with their stories when we started of course uh, the first years it was more like uh, develop it and create it in-house and uh, uh, we not uh, take on board uh, any uh, ideas uh, uh, from uh, from outside if you talk about at the moment right now it's not this uh, i cannot tell that we take some ideas and uh, projects from outside and just produce it. Mm -hmm. But we invite talented uh, people, we invite some talented teams. We start to, uh, uh, we, we research uh, every year uh, for, for this uh, talent. Of course, when we invite them, we like implement them to our team. Because actually, if, uh, uh, if we just can give them money to produce, they will never produce what we need. And uh, better to just, like, we can invite them. And after that, we start work together. And uh, I cannot tell that new stories coming from, uh, from inside or new stories coming outside. New stories coming uh, from inside and outside at the same time with the team and uh, because we anyway we every time we combine our internal team and external uh, talents uh, around the world mm -hmm. now it's we're going like this way 
Yeah. I mean, filmmaking is a team process. And I can only assume like how much of a team process animation must be. So many people working on something. They, like I mean, there is no way <laughs> of, of yes, being yes, egotistical, yes. I guess, in, in animation. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, also, also, also what, what, what changed right now, that's uh, we also invite now more and more uh, our partners, like licensing partners and media partners. Uh, because when we start, we start like uh, like alone. Yes, we, we create that in house. So we when and we when we pre already produced the series, uh, we show that our partners and uh, start negotiation about they will buy or not and uh, like that. Now, when we start any project with our team, with any uh, talented team, what we invite in this project, at the same time we invite our partners media platforms uh, licensing uh, merchandising uh, companies and we create all of our projects combining all experts uh, from not only just for from us but from from our parts uh, the mm -hmm. same time mm -hmm. so and and your interest in in marketing and licensing um, uh, children's goods came that out of the the work with animation and and creating something for kids or the other way around i, I don't know <laughs> uh because i don't tell that what we built already it's like animation company we built company who create new worlds mm -hmm. some new uh interesting places where kids can came and mm -hmm. they can came different ways they can came through animation they can came from uh, game from books uh, from toys and uh, when we start any project we uh, not think about just licensing or just animation we think about like interesting work what we want to create and uh, trying to find different doors how uh, kids can came to this world and we more concentrate about stories about characters about what about engine about what what driving that these characters why kids uh, will be will want to came and spend more time with these characters and not just only kids because any kids project the same time it's like a family project and we and we need to I mean, think about parents like something like something like minecraft minecraft like i mean i don't even know like for for what target group was minecraft created no some guy had a great crazy idea created minecraft and suddenly it exploded and everyone used it and of course kids loved it but of course <laughs> parents loved it too well, why not <laughs> Yeah. Yes, and and at that moment right now we have uh, uh, also another challenge that uh, after twenty years of successful uh, our project, of course, kids what start to watch our series and start to play with our characters. Now they are not kids; they are no, like no, no. Uh, they are twenty-five, up, thirty yeah. years uh, yeah. <laughs> big guys. And uh, this is the same what uh, Disney and other big companies, uh, how they growing, how they, how they uh, work with the, the, this audience. Because now for us, we have kids, we have parents. At the same time, we have uh, adults who was growing with our characters and uh, who want also to connect with this character, but other way. Mm -hmm. No, like I, I, I used a little joke in my last film that that uh, that Bart Simpson, like the Simpsons are on for such a long time that Bart Simpson is now the should now be the age of Homer Simpson. <laughs> yes, which is, yes, which yes, is completely yes. crazy. But I, I totally get it. Of course, you, you, you create like you, you, you start something and then the people you who are the target audience kind of like grow out of it. But there might be the super good chance of like that. They will have kids and they might actually they have of course a nostalgic relationship to the stuff that you created so it's a that that's a super interesting challenge yeah yeah yes yes absolutely but and like i'm waiting for that question for such a long time now uh i'm 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 super super excited that you have the biggest 
art toy collection in Europe. Yeah, I, I, okay. I, I don't understand. I don't know about is it biggest in Europe or not, but it's one of the biggest in Europe. Maybe in I don't even. World. I don't care. <laughs> yes. Don't anyway, care anyway, it anyway it's, it's it's yes. It's very nice. And very, uh, very funny that how it was started. It was started the same time when we start uh, our animation uh, okay. project, Sharikia, and when I start to. Uh, travel around the world to pitch our project to, to show that for in different countries uh, at the same time I started collect uh, different uh, crazy uh, characters uh, which looks like something uh, unique and something design. and uh, 20 years ago uh, it was not so many of these stories uh, uh, but year by year my collection was growing and at the same time designer art toys and a like a and a new uh, way of uh, pop art it's uh, also mm -hmm. come and grow and now it is one of the big uh, part of uh, art uh, in general and many collectors around the world who collect designer toys my collection uh, like i know like eight percent of this collection uh, uh, we're showing this in our animation studio uh, in St. Petersburg, uh, mm -hmm. in our head headquarter. And now this collection is it's really, it's like a museum. And it's, it is also part of our studio, uh, like a part of story and part of uh, DNA. And uh, everybody who came to our studio at the same time, they can see this uh, real museum and uh, i also invite you to <laughs> to look at it yes i, I totally want to see it i mean I'm, I'm now sitting in a hotel room usually i do my interviews uh from my home and i have a giant like uh man-sized like playmobil figurine usually standing behind me when i do interviews and i thought like oh my god i'll go with, um, i'll be interviewing Ilya. he will see my playmobil and of course <laughs> now you don't <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Doesn't and matter. the same for me. I'm I'm in Dubai now, not in my studio. And uh, yes, I can cannot show you that, but I can show like a video uh, how it look like. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, the important part is, and that's I guess something that is so, of course, like relevant in creative industries. But in general, every kind of industry has to be creative. I mean, if you if you're not creative, your 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 company will die. I mean, you cannot just like, keep going and keep going and keep going. And so my question would be like, how, how much what is there? Because to a certain degree, you have to be creative, and you have to push the boundaries at the same time, you cannot be too extreme with certain things. So like, how, how, how does that work like in your creative process of like not, not overdoing it, but also not being too conservative? I don't know. For, 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 for us, uh, we was, a, I think it's, uh, for, for, you know that when you are a pioneer, if you start to create something which uh, nobody creates in your country, on one hand, it's of course it's hard, but at the same time, it's very, very good opportunity to make something crazy because mm -hmm. it's no board borders uh, now. Of course, when we when when, when now we uh, create any project and when going to uh, our partners, they have so many li limitations, so many uh, like a marketing uh, people who tell us what we can do, what we cannot do. And of course, it's not every time good for uh, for creating something uh, original. Mm -hmm. Many like uh, limitations or borders uh, like that. And that's why uh, for for me, for my, my team, uh, we are happy that at first we have this possibility to make something uh, really unique because uh, it we, was at first. But now at this moment, we also uh, can do some many creative things without limitations because we have very big community on YouTube. We have a very big community on social media and it also helps us because it's, you know, that 
we, we connect with the, our audience uh, like directly like a one to one and uh, only one limitation what we have uh, insight about our creative uh, things that if we create something for kids understand that we we are all parents we are mm -hmm. all uh, when we create something we think about our kids too mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. why for example we will never go to something uh, like a some animation just uh, for, 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 for for funny and that's it all mm -hmm. our project includes something uh, educational something for for like for development and uh, so to, to explain something maybe uh, important for kids and uh, uh, this is our mission yes so we mm -hmm. create animation for kids uh, like with uh, some something what help kids and the parents uh, to communicate kids to know more about this world and this only one limitation about creative side what we have at this moment from us mm -hmm. yeah it's a big responsibility to be kind of like the media teachers of of of, of young minds of course yeah, yeah I, I i totally get that were there ever problems uh because especially if it's about kids like like parents and and and, and people are very uh protective of course what their kids can see or should not see and if you do something a product that is kind of like coming out of one culture it might be something that in another culture is probably not seen that way or in a different way where there are sometimes problems with like uh, with products you made and then in other in other cultures and other markets they they were seen as i don't know like too crazy or or, or 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 i don't know yes yes sure sure it's uh, sometimes we uh, when we present our project for our partners in other countries uh, some of them can tell, to tell us yes your story is too extremely hard to understand for example yes uh, mm -hmm. if you start to in uh, in our main project when from which we start Misharike, we start this project it's like a stories for kids but interesting for adults yes and mm -hmm. uh, we start to create many stories with many like like three layers of humors and uh, uh some stories it's not like a one genre like just comedy we play mm -hmm. with different genres we play with horrors we play with uh, uh adventure stories uh something crime uh, stories and uh, this also part of our this project but when we bring this project to for example for broadcaster in europe some of them yes you have 200 uh, episodes but only 50 we can take because mm -hmm. for others it's uh, not the same for this age group and it is okay because we have enough <laughs> and we understand that for us it's important to create uh, this in the same way uh, with experimentals uh, with and with uh, we, we're trying to play with this project we not want to keep it in uh, like a frame uh, trying to produce something specially for I don't know for for girls uh, from four to six year yeah we want to produce uh, again something what what we like and what we think that our kids will like and I know sometimes um, managers, media managers from some countries, they can tell that, no, you have only half of that, <laughs> uh, what we can take. And another one, it's mm -hmm. something not the same. Do, do you actually work with people, you know, like from universities or so who who specifically study, you know, like child development or something like that? Do you Do you work with experts? Yeah, sure. Of, uh, because uh, some of our projects uh, we create, especially like in the entertainment area, when we invite people, uh, just experts uh, who understand, for example, about early development. But our project, it's named Baby Ricky. It's like a spin-off of our main project, but uh, what which we produce specially for small kids before three or four years old. And for that, 
uh, projects we very very care about each episode and about how to how to talk with the kids in this age group explain them about uh, some uh, everything what they like trying to understand and touch at first time in uh, their own life and yes yeah, about uh, we understand about our that we are response <laughs> for many things because sometimes you know that uh, media and tv and the internet sometimes sometimes it's like many for for kids because many parents who just leave uh, their own kids with the tv or with ipad and uh, we understand that how we can how we communicate with these kids actually it's uh, the same like parents leave their own kids with us and we are responsible yeah. Uh, and this moment about these kids. Yeah, I remember what what giant outcry that was in the 1990s when the Teletubbies came came on, and everyone like all 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 the all the newspapers were writing, "This is the end of the world." The Teletubbies, like <laughs> our kids, will all be stupid and everything. That this is like the end. This is like, and and the Teletubbies are classics in the meantime, and they are just like a wonderful program and and also very very interestingly made it's like, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah we, we, we have the same uh, in russia when teletubbies uh, starts showing on our main channel and uh, because it was uh, some famous and successful in this moment uh, our media managers uh, decided to show that uh, i don't know in uh, around 3 p.m when kids uh, coming from school and of course, uh, for parents and for kids, it was uh, something, something crazy, because mm -hmm. it looks like something stupid. What you tell, but at the same time, of course, if we think about and we look at this project, uh, the project produced especially for toddlers. Yeah, they speak on absolutely different language. Uh, they speak on absolutely different, like timing it's about uh with with these kids if we're trying to talk the same way how we talk with the uh, school age kids it's not the same and uh, this teletab is a really unique project but you need to show it especially for toddlers not for yeah exactly for school age groups <laughs> yeah i mean i guess that the big outcry was why do we need to make a television program that is specifically for toddlers Toddlers should not watch TV. The, the parents should take care of the toddlers. And of course, there's also a, a kind of like kind of reactionary, like media phobic uh, subcurrent in all of that debates that like the media. Yeah, from, from my personal opinion, I absolutely agree that uh, better when kids uh, will not uh, connect with any uh, the screens before three years old. But in real life, anyway, they are connect. And when they connect, Next question: What they, what they see, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, why we go also decide to go to this uh, area and start to create project, uh, especially for toddlers. And the same, it's because uh, when it's, if they see, we want to give them content, especially for this age group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You're right. Yeah. So I, I have a, I have a very. Uh, specific question because it's one of my favorite questions i ask it to to many many people i personally from my own experience as doing creative work is some of the greatest things that came out were because something completely went wrong and i call it beautiful failure you know like something just like enormously exploded something i don't like <laughs> and and out of that out of the ashes of something that completely fell apart something great comes out was there something in your career where something completely went wrong, but it was good that it went wrong or did created something new? Again, I can talk about our main project uh, because uh, this is uh, like a biggest part of story of uh, my, my company and uh, everything was uh, the story. Uh, for example, at, at the moment, the first, that's uh, when we decided to create these characters very uh if you will see this uh, project how look at our characters they look very uh, simple uh, they look mm -hmm. like uh that's why very was very uh simple to 
made adaptation for spin-off uh, for toddlers because mm -hmm. in original our original characters looked like uh, very young characters but at mm -hmm. the same time story uh, with these characters uh, very deep and uh, for sometimes uh, for understand the story you need to see uh, these episodes maybe twice uh, or more especially with kids and uh, for for us when we create this we made big like a challenge for, for us because of course it's like it's difficult to make deep stories and uh, for, uh, some philosophical philosophical things uh, but at the same time with very uh, simple characters mm. and uh, was yeah it was some challenge to <laughs> to promote this to explain about that to bring uh, our audience for this project and mm -hmm. of course many projects what we trying to create the uh, last 20 years not all of them uh, was uh, was successful like our like our main projects some mm -hmm. of them it was yeah it was like a mistake and uh, we see that we connect with our audience so we connect with our partners we understand that what we need to change more more of uh, mistakes we did with the business i think mm -hmm. not about creative mm -hmm. side about business we made much more <laughs> much more mistakes <laughs> but it's also i mean you pretty much like created a completely new industry in russia i mean it's like there there, there wasn't really a precedent for what you did so i mean there's uh, so uh, i mean of course you you have to make mistakes <laughs> yes yes that's a, yeah. and it's okay it's part of our yeah. life and part of our business yeah, no, ab ab absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so we are almost through, like almost at, at the 45 minute mark. But what I would like to ask you is, are there things that you would, um, uh, first of all, are there specific projects that you're very proud of that, that you created that people should have a look at? But also, are there any uh, shout outs that you want to, to make? Like maybe films that you have seen recently or books or things that kind of, or things that influenced you uh we can also put that you know like in the in in the in the sections with like links and stuff like that but maybe, maybe something that that you would recommend i didn't catch uh, your question can you repeat please okay i i can re uh, i i can uh, repeat it so uh the first question would be are there any specific projects of the last 20 years of working that you that people don't know so much Maybe even some of the projects that were maybe even like considered failures, but you still like a lot and would say like, people, you should check that out. You 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 know our bigger projects, but we have a couple of smaller projects that are very, very good. That is the first mm -hmm. question. And the second question is like, if there are any things that you in general recommend, animated films, not not of your company, but in general, yes, things yes. that, that yeah. you that you like a lot, that you would that you would give a shout out. Talking about our projects, um, for me it's hard. <laughs> no, one of one of the projects uh, which now we stop, but I very like this project. It's uh, named uh, Alisa. Uh, now, uh, now to do. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Uh, because I know this uh, naming in Russia, but I don't mm -hmm. remember right maybe in, in english but anyway this is a story based on uh, on the famous uh, russian uh, author who uh, created uh, uh, fantasy books and we create this uh, animation series very big budget very high quality animation and we stopped this project because uh, we not raised enough money for continue this project but it's really really nice story and i really like it and we produce it with uh, my partner Timur Vikmabetov. He's also a very known uh, director and producer uh, who worked for his, um, many Hollywood uh, companies. That's about ours. About in general, I like my 
uh, in personal, I really like uh, Miyazaki, Hayao Miyazaki. And mm. uh, I know that he's very known in uh, worldwide, but this at the same time, still many people, nobody know this, uh, his films very well. And uh, this is classic movies and uh, classic animations. And uh, I think uh, everybody who still not see that, that to, 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 to see, so you can see. Uh, yeah, ab absolutely. Yeah, it is. It is. It is strange that uh, not more people know it because every now and then I talk to people about some of the films, and they might have seen one of the films, but still don't know that there are more of that studios. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Studio Ghibli. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Studio yeah. Ghibli. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now that's like... that's also like uh, very very high up. I I remember when I was a kid in the nineteen eighties, I was so immensely impressed by akira i'm not not sure if you know that akira one. yes akira this but akira, when I... akira for me akira for me and that's my personal opinion akira for me are too aggressive and uh, uh it's of, of course it's uh, like a depends of point of view but from my side that's why i like miyazaki because miyazaki here like a very positive oh yeah director he, yeah, yeah absolutely not in that I mean, he made something just only about happiness uh, because his story have many uh, uh, drama inside uh, story but at the same time he's very positive yeah yeah now akira is a cyberpunk film and it's very aggressive and very technological it, it's almost a horror film i mean it's like i mean <laughs> yeah, yeah but that's but, why it's i mean when... my, uh, yes my stuff <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I mean, when when I watched it in the in in the cinema back then, I thought like, what what did I just see? What was this? It was like a like a bad trip. <laughs> like I, I uh, and I think I, I haven't even seen it like many times after that. But something stuck in my mind about that. Also, that I didn't know, and that is something really. I guess what 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 connects it also to your story is that 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 uh, uh, that animation is so incredibly interesting because you can just show things that are just like not possible in a real world setting you 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 don't have the borders that you have in classical normal like film you and you also asked me if, uh, about about cultural side of our project mm -hmm. and uh, talking about the recommendations if we talk about international audience, I think it's so many really very uh, nice and uh, very talented short stories that was created in Soviet Union, which not so many people know about that. I think it's also, well, I can, I can share with you some list. Mm -hmm. Oh, possible absolutely. To look, uh, look on YouTube maybe in English subtitle with English subtitles, which really uh, very nice and uh, like a must to, 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 to see uh, like animation from Soviet Union. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the short stories by the brothers Trugazzi. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah. I like from, from the seventies and eighties and stuff that there's like, yeah, there's just like wonderful jewels of stories and I can't, believe that they haven't been made into movies yet or something like that because there's just like just enormously great stuff yeah and for example for, at... so for... oh, sorry yeah, yeah yes. please 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 no i just just example that for example winnie the pooh oh, yeah. there is a famous very successful project when this the disney star to make uh, a series and uh, feature films with uh, their own original version of winnie pooh but at the same time we have our version uh, came from Fyodor Hitchuk. Uh, it's one of the famous uh, director from Soviet Union. He he created just only three uh, episodes. It's not like a series, only three, but it's incredibly beautiful, nice uh, view of this uh, story and uh, how it looks like. It's something something really really must look. Absolutely. Just a sample. 
we we definitely so like all the people who don't know Russian so well, we definitely have to put that into the into the comment section for a link so people people can find it. It was yes, it enormously is. great to talk to you. We are already over our time. Thank you so much uh, 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 for sharing some of your insights. Thank you so much. It was great meeting you. And I hope we stay in contact in some way. And of course, I would love at some point to see your collection in St. Petersburg. <laughs> Thank you, Hannes. Yes, and please came to look. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you. And cut. <laughs> <laughs>